Okay, recording has begun. Let me reshare the slide for you. So as we said, there'll be an opportunity to ask questions at the end of the session. I was originally going to put it in a Microsoft form, but feedback from people on the last couple of webinars is they preferred to either unmute mics and ask questions, which is absolutely fine, and I'll ask you to do that at certain points. That's you me. can also that's pop me. them into the chat on the side too. So if you are on here, can you just make sure your microphone is muted and your camera's off and we'll continue. So this afternoon we are going to use Teams for communication. So previously in other webinars before the last half term, we looked at using Teams in quite a large way. So this afternoon will be a narrow focus on just using the communication parts of Teams and how they can help you either working with other staff or also working with pupils in your school. So you might have asked why, why Teams, we'll cover that in a moment. We're going to look at some Teams updates all the way through the presentation. I'll mention little, little additions that have been made and might be coming up soon. We'll then look at remote communication using Teams. We've still got some pupils in school in bubbles and others that are at home, and that may or may not continue, so we can look at how to use Teams for that. We'll look also at how to build community and the accessibility tools that are built in, and we'll take question and answers at different points, so you'll be able to come and talk to me about that. So the question I always get is, why on earth do we want to use Teams as this communication platform? And it's really thinking of Teams as this single digital hub and everything you need is there in one place. You can get files, you can teach lessons with it, which is one of the previous webinars, but you can also do an awful lot of communication with it. And it means that you don't also have to branch out and use other apps in Office 365. Very often things like Word or Excel or PowerPoint or OneNote can all work inside Teams. You can also use those when you're collaborating, collaborating and communicating with each other as well. The other benefit is that you can get it on pretty much any device. It works as a tab in a web browser and it's really happy doing that. So you can use it on Windows computers, computers running Linux, Apple Macs. You can also use it on Chromebooks as well because it works in a browser. But then you've also got dedicated apps that can be installed. And if you've got parents or pupils that can't afford a computer but do have a tablet device at home or a mobile phone, you can get apps that will install on those and it will work quite happily. Obviously, it's a bit more restricted on the screen size of a phone, but it can enable people to get by. Certainly, if you're using it for communication and video calls, it's not too bad. It gets a bit more fiddly if you're using it for lessons. The windows itself are organized in a way that's quite easy to navigate, and we'll cover some of these later in the session. But it's also a document online. So if you sort, uh, search online for the Teams guide or the Teams orientation guide, it will come up and you'll get a very similar screenshot to what I have there. We can use it for contacting staff remotely. So you may have people that you job share with or you've got some staff that are present in school on a daily basis and others that are still at home on the individual day. So if you need to get together, whole staff meetings or just talking about planning within a subject or within a key stage phase, you can do that over Teams. It's also not just about education. So you can use it for pastoral sessions and you could also use it for mental well-being, whether that's pupils or staff. Some pupils have found it very difficult being at home, being more isolated than the school social situation. Or with staff, I've often seen now schools having sessions that are catch-ups well, we've still got to socially distance, but it could be that you get a cup of tea and a slice of cake or a piece of fruit and you have a chat and a catch up in a virtual after school meeting or a session. And it's just just one of those things that lends itself quite well. I've also had some schools doing socials like quizzes over Teams, too, because they can't get together and they can't go for a night out. I'm going to jump out of the presentation and move over into Teams itself. So when you arrive in Teams, you'll probably be presented with a view that's very similar to this, except yours will be vertically down the side unless you were the administrator in the school. You'll have all different types of Teams, but you can have conversations in various different ways. It could be that you have one-to-one -one chats, and the communication is really easy to say, I'm not with somebody or I can't go into the classroom like I did before, but I need to have a chat. And it's more informal than email, but I still need to get an answer from someone. So you can go into chats on the side and staff 
usually are configured to have chats and we recommend that pupils don't have this private chat function because it means discussions can go on that are unmoderated and for safeguarding any safety reasons you wouldn't really want that occurring in your school so you can use the functions down at the bottom if you press the edit tool which is the a with the paintbrush on it you've got a lot of the formatting options you'd have in a word processor you can also do things like insert links and then down here you can pop in tables and you've got also the ability to put in codes from websites if you wanted to so it might be uh good afternoon are we still planning almost are we still meeting for planning instead of actually going around to the classroom you could just pop that in there and it goes off to the colleague you're chatting with they get the message their end and you can have notifications set up in any way you wish notification settings are up here and they're not within office 365 they're within teams so if you click on your name up there press settings there and then you get all of your different settings about how you want it up but notifications are in there so there's quite a few options about mentions if you're mentioned in uh, messages also how you want your messages to appear and then other notifications you might get so just get them to suit the way that you work you obviously don't want a full block on screen if it's got something private or sensitive in it you might just want a dot a red dot which is often the way it notifies you that there's something that needs to your attention you can go in and have a look i've got some schools also using this for whole school notifications such as the bus is delayed this afternoon we won't be picking up at 3 p.m it's going to be 10 past three could you hold pupils in classrooms and you might want to do that either through a group chat here in this function or you may want to do it over here in teams and you've got staff teams set up and there could be channels or it could be the general channel and just like your private chat you can make group posts so in there you press the same formatting tool and then you can make an announcement in there in that channel and that will also come up in the notifications so you can use it for in school communications and it can sometimes replace paid platforms so you can make a cost saving or it just makes it easier than someone having to check their inbox because it comes up and you've got some sort of notification indication that they need to go and read what's there while you are over in your chat if you were maybe in here and you're starting to exchange some text messages you've also got the option to attach files and those can be from your OneDrive. If you store things in your OneDrive, your OneDrive is like a USB stick or an external hard drive, except it's stored on Microsoft servers and all your documents are in the cloud. Or you can upload from your computer. And if you click upload from my computer, it will look at the files on your computer and then it will insert them and attach them to your post. If it's something that's between staff and it's appropriate to do so, you've also got emojis. They are filtered for school use. So a lot of the ones that are on other platforms are not in there. They have been reduced greatly. You could also use GIFs again if it's appropriate. So those short videos to get expression across. And something that I use quite frequently more with pupils than staff are stickers. So you can quickly send a sticker. And if I'm giving feedback to pupils, particularly in a class team, I might quickly pop a sticker in on a comment that's been made or give a piece of feedback with a sticker. And pupils love it. And it's a really quick way for you to get some recognition to somebody that you've understood what they're saying, you hear what they're contributing, but uh, you don't want to always type a text message back. You can add in recorded videos with something called Stream down here, and there will be some hidden apps depending on how your school is configured. And those apps won't always be the same. If you want to convert this into a meeting with the person that you're chatting with, you just press the button up here and it will start a video call. It will ask you if you're in a browser, if you want to allow the browser to have access to the microphone on your computer and the camera in your computer. You will need a webcam if you're going to have a video call. So if you're doing this from a desktop computer, you might need to purchase an external webcam. You press allow if it's on the laptop it will then say do you want to allow access to your webcam probably your software will come up and you press continue with audio or video call and then it will go in a loop on here i'm just going to mute that mic and you can then start having a video call because the person on the other end would answer i'm just going to stop that so it's quite quick and easy to then continue that as a video call and just like we are now you'll have the meetings bar in the middle you can still have a conversation in the meeting because that's on the side you can also see who's who's there and if on the video call you decide you want to invite other people to it 
you press the plus button up on the corner, you type in the email address or the name of the person in your school, and you press add and they can join in the conversation. So you don't have to have added them in previously, you can add them in on the fly as you're having your meeting. So that's one way to have spontaneous meetings or spontaneous chats. You can also use your calendar. So the calendar in Teams can be accessed over on the sidebar. It's the same calendar that you have in your Office 365. So if I was over here and I was in my Outlook, so some of you might use the Outlook software on your computer. Some of you may use the Outlook in your web browser. Just depends on how you personally prefer to access your email. Once you're in here, you can get to your calendars down here. And then the calendar in here in this view is exactly the same as the calendar inside of Teams. They are the same thing. You can set up web events for Teams in your calendar from here, but it is easier to do it from the calendar function on the side in, in your Teams app itself. So if I decided I wanted a meeting at four o'clock, I click the button there, I get it in there. So it might be the whole staff meeting. I can add attendees in, so I may add my demo account in for the person that I'm working with there. So they're in there. You can add optional attendees. So if you notice somebody might benefit from being in a meeting, but they don't absolutely have to attend, you can add them in there. You set the time and the length of the meeting. So I might say that this meeting is going to be one hour long. You can have it to repeat if you wish. It could be daily, weekly, monthly. So if you knew you had a whole staff meeting Tuesday afternoon every week, then set it once and don't do this every single week. Why add a burden to yourself? You then choose either to have it attached to a channel in Teams or not. So you've got Teams such as I have here, Governor's Team. But inside my governor's team, I might be inviting the governors to my whole staff meeting. I'm going to put the announcement in the general channel of the governor's team. And we'll go look at how that appears in a bit. You can add a location if you wish. So you can configure it for rooms in the school if we ever get back to face to face meetings. And then down here, you give a description of your agenda. You've got all the text formatting options that you've had previously, your website links. You can also attach documents as well in here. So you've got quite a scope as to what you are going to include. One thing to bear in mind, and you can't hide it yet, is that everybody's email addresses that you add in here will be visible to other people participating in the meeting. So if you are using Teams to meet with parents or you're meeting with external professionals, maybe you've got a meeting around a particular child and you're adding in an educational psychologist or a social worker, they would be able to see each other's email addresses. So it's worth mentioning that to people when you add them in the meeting. It's one of the regular requests that go to Microsoft about can we hide the email addresses to stop participants seeing each other's addresses. At the moment you can't, but in the future hopefully you can. So I'm going to press send on that one. And as I press send, it will add it into my calendar. It will be a pale color with a little circle going around in the bottom right hand corner while it's being added. But once it's in there, it will then appear in not only your calendar, but the calendar of the other person. I said I'd show you what that looks like in a team. So if I come back out of my staff team and I went to my governor's team, my governors now have got a announcement that I require as many of my governing body members as possible to come to the whole staff meeting and it comes up as a post inside the general channel of their team so also as well as getting it in your calendar you can't fail to miss it because it's there inside of your team and your channel in your team as well if i pop back over once it gets close to the event and i deliberately schedule that you'll get a join icon and that allows you to jump straight into the video call but if you click the event itself it will come up there and you can go back in and edit it if you wish. You will also get, once it's been made, meeting options. So if you click meeting options, you'll get into another set of meeting options. And in here, you can enforce a lobby area. So you were all held until the first person joined the turn on meeting this afternoon in a virtual lobby. It's like a waiting room if you're going to the doctors or the dentist. So you can enforce the lobby for people in your organization to go in the lobby. You could have everyone to go in the lobby. So I'm going to say everyone has to wait in the lobby. Uh, I'm going to say that nobody could bypass the lobby. So they have, they have to stay there until I uh, join the meeting. That's really good if you're going to use these meetings for distance learnings with pupils. It means the pupils can't get into 
the meeting ahead of you and start having discussions or something inappropriate happens a bit like you getting your pupils in the classroom before you arrive you wouldn't let that happen necessarily just in case so you can manage your virtual classroom and your virtual meetings in the same way so as well as using these for staff meetings i've got a lot of schools using these quite successfully for distance learning lessons they don't have to be a whole hour they may just be meetings where they're coming to join you for a proportion of your real lesson like a 20 minute uh, session but I would always say check with the rules in your school every school has its own take on broadcasting live lessons whether they permit it or whether they don't permit it whether you need to have certain backgrounds covered you can also use features in call I'll show you in a bit to cover up your backgrounds you can also get announcements of when people leave the meeting and you can decide who can present in the meeting. So if you don't want pupils to take over your session and present, you can change it to only you can share your screen like I'm doing now. And then those features will apply to that meeting. You can apply them once the meeting set up and you get the done. And then all of that is applied to the meeting. So I'm going to close it down because I don't want to join it, but it's there for everyone else to join. And all those rules that I've just applied are now set in that meeting. What it looks like if I jump back across to our meeting over here, you can now see I've got people in a grid. So those of you that are used to using other social services, uh, you can get grids at the moment that are three by three. However, in the future coming quite soon in the next month, you'll be able to increase that up to having even more thumbnails appear here. I will give you a word of warning if your broadband is flaky or you've got an old laptop, having a lot of people on live video calls here will significantly affect the stability of your call. And that's one of the reasons why Microsoft have held off introducing a large amount of people appearing as thumbnails up there. While I'm here as well, I might as well cover the meeting bar in the middle. So you can turn your camera on and off here you can also mute your microphone which is what you've been doing you can share your desktop i won't press that otherwise i'm going to disappear from view but you can share what's on your screen on your laptop you can either share the entire screen on your computer you can share a second screen if you've got it and leave your first screen private for you or you can share just a particular application so if i just wanted to share the presentation which is what i've just gone to now i could just share the powerpoint presentation and people viewing what's on my computer would only see the powerpoint they wouldn't see anything else on the desktop of my computer you can raise a hand and that's a recent uh, feature that's been added that came in may so if i wanted to be in the meeting but indicate that i wish to contribute i can press the raise the hand feature so all of you should now see a yellow hand appear next to my name and if any of you wanted to ask a question you could pop up your yellow hand and i would see that was there as long as it was on this screen uh, and i would know that you're waiting patiently you wouldn't have to try and work out where there's a lull in proceedings to add something in or comment I mentioned about conversations. You can have conversations in meetings. So over if you press that one there over on the right hand side, you'll get conversations. So I might say welcome and I type in there. I can attach files and I've got all of the emojis and giphys and, and uh, stream uh, videos. But when I put a comment in there, it is also visible to everyone else in the meeting. That is not private. So if you do say anything in there, everyone that's in the meeting will see what you are saying so make sure it's something that you're happy with being in a public forum you can also see who are the participants in the meeting today mine's had a had a wobble you should have an arrow pointing down with a line underneath it and you can download the register in the meeting for everyone that's there that's really useful if you've got lessons and you are presenting to pupils you can download a register as an excel document but also i noticed some colleagues on here from turn it on if you were running it with uh, schools you can download a register of attendance and you can get it out so that it's all out there in one place and it's in a spreadsheet you know who attended who their email addresses were what time they joined and what time they left if people are being quite rowdy you can press the mute all button and then that will mute the microphones of everybody you can see if their microphones are muted because over here on the side they've got a line through their microphone as yet there isn't a button to mute all their cameras so you have to ask people to kindly switch their cameras off it would be standard protocol with a pupil if they were in a meeting to have their camera off unless you want them to turn it on also i'd advise you to have their mics muted or you mute it for them because otherwise it gets so loud 
loud and rowdy that it's really hard to hear what's going on and it's it's quite a waste of everybody's time if everyone's shouting over each other so mute microphone or mute all is really useful for that here is also a way to mute uh, sorry to invite someone so if i wanted to invite a colleague so it might be daryl who i work with i could click on their name i won't do it and then daryl will get invited to this meeting if you forgot to invite him along in the first place i'll jump out of the people on the side and uh, when you want to end the call you press end currently if somebody wanted to they could rejoin the meeting by clicking the link there is a feature coming next month which stops people coming back into meetings once they've left so you have complete control of when people join with the lobby and after they leave they can't come back into the meeting without you being present so that feature is coming soon and i know a lot of people also had concerns about that particularly around pupils the dot dot dots in the middle are another whole set of features so this is where i started the recording this afternoon and you can stop recordings i'll show you later where recordings are stored you can also get a keypad on screen by pressing that so if you need to type numbers in they are there you can get rid of that by pressing escape you can bring it to be full screen uh, so if i wanted to get rid of everything else it's there and minimize the teams around it i can do that i press escape to get back out of that then at the bottom again on the dot dot dots you can have backgrounds this is something that's really useful if you've got to do it in a room in your house and you haven't got somewhere private to do it and uh, maybe there's pictures on the wall or the people that have to walk about in distance behind you. Well, if you apply one of these backgrounds like I have, you appear to be in quite a professional environment when actually you may be sat at the kitchen table and you know what the sink's behind you, but that's covered up by the backgrounds. For staff on here that are working in schools, there's lots of different backgrounds that now can be customised. So if you're using this for teaching i've seen a lot of schools use this quite successfully by getting themed backgrounds and you apply the background you might get dressed up in costume and you could be having a lesson there's an english lesson or maybe a topic lesson and you can be in the environment you can reflect what's there you can also upload bespoke backgrounds so if it was something for a bit of fun you might say we're doing storytelling and you link it out to doctor who and the adventures that doctor who goes on but you can have a doctor who background there and you can add them in by pressing add new you used to have to go through a really complicated process but now the add new buttons at the top so you've got a lot of ways that you can add backgrounds in now and you can change those around to suit you and you can change during the call as well so they're quite a nice feature but also professionally it makes it so that you are in the right environment i will jump back over to my demo team so you've got your formal meetings there. You can also have a meet now from here. And if you pressed meet now, it would come into a into a window. You choose whether you want to have your microphone and your camera on and off. You will give your meeting a title. So it might be meeting test. I won't do this because I'm already in a meeting and it will knock me out if I press join now because you can't be in two meetings at the same time because it takes your computer over. But you could also have this as a phone audio call. One of the features that uh, is really underrated and is something that's going to become quite big in the future is your teams doesn't have to be video calls or interactive calls like we're doing now you can also use it for the telephony in your school so teams has the potential in the future to get rid of all the expensive telephone contracts that you have and you can have teams to be linked up with the handsets in your school and it can handle all of your internal and your outgoing calls as well so it's something that people often overlook but teams is capable of taking over all that functionality so you can stop paying expensive phone contracts in school as well i'm just going to close that one and come out of it you can have a meeting from within a team so if you happen to be in your class team and you're in the main post section if you wanted to have a meet now as a teacher you can press the meet now button down the bottom we advise for pupils that that functionality is removed and if any of you have recently been on the dfe project with us if it was a pupil in the class team they wouldn't have the meet now feature they would only see the stickers and then straight onto stream i said finally i would tell you where all your recordings went your recordings are over here so this is the landing page i'm in at the moment but you can also get to what i'm about to show you from the app launcher it's in stream and if i go into stream it's a video library for all recordings so you can also use this function of the meet to record meetings 
and then you could drop them into class teams instead of having live meetings like we're doing now so if your school doesn't allow live meetings you can pre-record and all your recordings go into stream so all you do is go to discover and videos you can set up channels for your school as well so you could have a teaching and learning channel and a staff channel and then you can make sure that pupils couldn't see the teaching and learning channel and then you go to your videos and you search for your videos and because i'm in a in an organization here that hasn't recorded anything there's not much to see but you would just see them building up here and then you can decide who has access who doesn't have access on the staff or the pupils and you've got a library of recorded lessons that builds up for them to use as well as far as today's session, those were the areas we were going to cover on just how to use Teams for meetings. So it seems like a really good point for me to stop screen sharing and just open up for questions. I will check first of all on the side, see if anyone's put any in the conversation and they haven't added any in. So if you want to unmute your mic, I will do my best to field any questions that you have. Or if you even want to share how you're using it in your school, or if anyone in turn it on who's in this meeting wants to share how they're using it in their team, feel free to share ideas or your successes with using Teams and meetings. Over to you. Don't be shy. There must be someone in here with one question at least. I can. You're very quiet. I'm going to turn the sound up on my computer. I've arranged a meeting and I've missed one person off. So how can I send an invitation to that one person to that meeting? Have you done it as a calendar event? Yes. Yes. OK, let me quickly reshare my computer. So on your calendar, can you see my calendar now? Yeah. Go back into it by clicking on there. Mm -hmm. Here are the people that you've invited. So if it was my dear old colleague, Daryl, who I'm using his name in vain, you just type their address in and then you hit send update and they would get it there. If you were already in the meeting and it's live, then you just go to the participants tab, type their name in there and then you click on them there and it would invite them into it and it would call them and then they would answer and join the meeting. So it's one way or the other. Oh, OK, that's lovely. Thank you very much. That's OK, not a problem. Any other questions? I've got one on the side. I'll just stop screen sharing a sec. Just jump over to it. How can you amend a screen to view more participants when it's only showing one? OK, so you by default if you let teams manage a meeting itself it will automatically show let me just reshare again it will automatically show the people that are last joined up here in the thumbnails and then everyone else will appear along the bottom as just their logo or their picture you can however pin people so on the dot dot dots here where it says more options so if it was judy I'm not picking on you judy you click on judy and i could pin judy so judy become there in the middle so sometimes you can pin people in and then you can unpin them and they go back to it if it's giving you a single person view in the in the beginning and you don't get this multiple grid view it means it's probably a setting in what's called the team's admin console so you'll need to get whoever is your it administrator for the school to go in and check what the setting is in the team's admin center and then they will be able to make it so that the teams itself handles what the view is unless you decide to pin someone manually any more questions hi martin i've got a question for you yes. um when we are sharing sometimes um, like an application, say, for instance, Sims, the people yeah. looking can't necessarily see all the drop downs. So we might be using a drop down box to look at um, different information and sometimes that becomes greyed out. Have you got any advice you can offer us to sort of help get resolve that? <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know if you were in a pupil record or something, you were you were pressing a drop down to choose an option. You were just saying it appear, the, the the drop down appears, but the options in the drop down aren't there for the person. The drop view. down box appears as a grey box with just greyed out and nothing. You can't see anything. It's just a grey image. Okay, the the most com they, there's an awful lot of reasons for that, but thinking of sims in particular um usually it's just due to inc incompatibility of the piece of software you're showing and that it doesn't interface with teams and there's not a lot you can do about that <laughs> yeah we don't have the problem with fms it's strange but we do with sims so yeah. thank you 
Yeah, nothing you can do, Michelle. It is just due, due to the build of the software that you're using. And I would imagine the Capita are probably I'm not going to have that on the top of their development list. Not at the moment, I wouldn't have thought, no. Thanks, Matt. Uh, okay. Anybody else like to answer a question, ask a question? I'll do my best to answer them. Okay. Well, I will stay on the call and on the meeting and remain here to answer questions in case anybody wants to ask something that's more individual to their school or them as you drop off. I'm going to stop the recording now, but I want to say thank you.